Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Tasty Tidbits Podcast. Get ready to receive rich, well-seasoned, and tasteful tidbits to transform your life. Each week, Dr. Tiffany comes to you with inspirational encouragement and thought-provoking interviews to help you revolutionize your walk with God. Are you hungry for more of His presence? Then get ready. And now, your host, pastor, author, and motivational speaker, Dr. Tiffany Watkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Tasty Tidbits. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany Watkins, and I am so excited to have you again here on another episode. Today, I'm so excited because we have an author with us today, Dave. He's going to be talking to us today, um, and I'm just so excited because he has a lot of good information to share. But I'm going to start off and read a little bit about his bio, and then we're going to get started. So Dave is a Christian author, and he is a speaker and a content creator. He grew up in LA and he now lives in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Dave and his wife, Janet, help discourage Christians hear God and hear them for real so they can live with bold purpose and on purpose. They also help churches learn how to embrace wounded people. And Dave writes about inner healing and intimacy with Jesus Christ. Wow, I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you for being on the episode so today, Dave, how are you today? Thank you, Dr. Tiffany. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, thank you for having me on. Yes, we're just so glad to have you on today. And you know, um, you talk a lot about inner healing. And so would you tell us a little bit more about yourself and more about identity and wholeness? Yeah, so um, my wife and I run the website, identityandwholeness.com. Uh, we write a lot about inner healing and Christian identity. Um, this idea that God made us to be special. God put something in us and we are not what we do. And one of the big lies in the culture right now is you are what you do. So if you do something wrong, canceled, end of you. <laughs> but that's not how it is in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, you are not what you do. Your value comes from being a son or a daughter of the living God. Amen. not from what you do and you live out of that place and what you do comes out of that place so that when you're really when you understand who you really are you live differently and so many of us live and i did this for a long time so many of us live like orphans because we don't know who we are but when you know your dad's the king you live differently mm -hmm. that's so true that's so true and i don't think a lot of us realize that we are King's kids, you know, we are his daughters and his sons. And if we really recognize that, like you said, we would truly live a different life than what we are living now most of the time. So today we are talking on what to do when someone leaves you. And we've all had this experience and I'm sure many of the listeners have as well. You know, you talk about how we break an unspoken agreement where we benefit from each other's dysfunction as we let someone leave. Can you talk a little bit more about benefiting from each other's, dis, uh, other's dysfunction and what that means? Because I believe mm -hmm. that, and before you get started, because, you know, I, I come across people um, in ministry and I come across people in my life coaching and just people in everyday life, even in families that deal with this particular issue. So just expand upon that a little bit more for us. Mm, I love this question. Um, yeah, so in relationships sick attracts sick and healthy attracts healthy um, and when we're when we're sick we, we may be completely sick in a different way than the other person is but if we're if we're looking at our spouse and going wow they're sick or our friend and go wow they're they're really messed up well you're in a relationship with them so guess what you're <laughs> you, you know we're messed up just as much maybe in a completely different way maybe in the diametrically opposed way but we're um, just as just as sick. So, for example, um, a lot of times you'll see in marriages one person is like the T Rex, you know, rah, 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 yelling all the time, and the other person is passive. And you think, well, you know, the the yellers, the the screamer is is the villain, and the other guys, the 
you know, the other person's the the martyr, you know, or the good guy, <laughs> quote unquote. But that's what they're getting out of it. So so the screamer, the the benefit they get out of it is they get their way all the time because they just have to scream and the other person capitulates. Mm -hmm. But the other person is getting something out of that too. They get to be the martyr. They get to have everyone feel sorry for them. They get to be the quote unquote good guy. Wow. So so we're each getting something out of this dysfunctional relationship. So when one person decides to get healthy, that flips over the whole apple cart. And the other person's like, hey, I, I thought we had a deal here. You know, I get my way and you get to be the martyr. Now, you're, now you stop being the martyr and I don't get my way all the time. What, what's up with that? I thought we had a deal here. You know, you broke the arrangement. <laughs> so it, it, when we get healthy, it puts the other person in an uncomfortable choice. Uh, if they can't bully us back into being sick, which usually doesn't work, because once you've gotten healthy, it's, it's like you can't go back. It's like mm -hmm. I'll never go back to live like that again. Uh, <laughs> but that puts the person in an uncomfortable choice. You, you got healthy because you were ready to, and maybe they weren't ready to make that leap. And now their apple cart's been overturned. And for the first time in their life, they're not in control of you. Mm -hmm. or can control of the situation and that's a scary place to be and now they have a choice they can get healthy themselves or they can leave and they they will do one of the two yes and you know even in relationships um and even if they don't leave if it's an abusive relationship then they'll stay and try to abuse and manipulate as well have you seen that as well dave yeah that's often um the, the first thing that they'll do is mm -hmm. try to bully you yeah. back into that relationship, whether it's uh, physical or whether it's emotional or verbal or whatever. Um, if, if you've gotten healthy, when, when you're healthy, you realize you have value and you, you don't tolerate bullies mm -hmm. and you won't tolerate physical abuse. If, if someone gets physical with you, 911. Mm -hmm. You call the police and you let them spend the night in jail and think about it there. Um, and you don't tolerate that. Um, if someone's being verbally abusive, when you get healthy, I had to learn this. Um, I would just leave the room. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, if you want to scream, that's fine. You can scream, knock yourself out, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have to be here in the room. You know, so if you want to scream to the walls, scream all you want, but I'm not going to be in the room. Let me know when you want to have a conversation without screaming. And I'd be, ha I'd love to have this conversation with you. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I was sharing with someone, I said, you know, that, you know, nobody can't argue with themselves. If if you leave and you're quiet, they can't argue with themselves because it's quiet and there's no one there. And so when you learn how to do that, it will help you a whole lot. And just being healthy, uh, getting healthy for yourself, it makes the other individual have to face their demons or face who they are and um, decide, like you said earlier, to choose whether they want to continue on that path, whether they want to change or, you know, or continue in that same dysfunction and go find another relationship where they can continue that dysfunction. You know, I have a lot of young ladies that I talk to sometime and they had to realize this. I had talked to a long, young lady not too long ago and she was just trying to help that individual, but the individual has to be willing to help themselves to change because you cannot change that person in and of yourself. Yeah, that's right. That, um, you, and it's scary because you don't want them to leave. You're attached to this person, <laughs> especially if you're married, you know, you're in a relationship or even a good friendship. You're mm -hmm. really attached to this person. You love them. You care for them. You don't want them to leave, but you can't control their choice and you that's have so to true. honor their choice, even if it's even if it's a bad choice, even if it's a choice to, to leave or end the relationship. Um, one of my favorite quotes in the world is, is by a guy named Danny Silk. And he says, um, the only person I can control on a good day is myself. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day, on a bad day, I can't even control myself. Right, but, right. <laughs> but on a good day, the only person I can control is myself. I can't control the other person's choice. And that is so true. You know, one of the first steps you advise a person to do is to let the person leave, you know, when they desire to leave you. Can you expound a little bit more on that? Yeah, so we kind of just touched on that. That's um, honoring their choice. Even if it's not the choice you want them to make, you cannot control them to stay. Mm -hmm. If they want to leave, um, if they choose to leave, they get to leave. That's their choice. 
they own their choice and they own the consequences for it. That's so true. So, you, it, which can be really scary. My wife and I volunteer in a crisis pregnancy center, and we see people who keep going through the same abusive relationships over and over mm-hmm. again. And a lot of times, one of the barriers to getting healthy is I'm afraid if I get healthy, if I set a boundary, if I do the right, if I do the healthy thing, that this person will leave me. And it really comes down to living like an orphan because we're afraid that well nobody else will have me mm-hmm. only this person and if this person leaves me I'm going to be alone the rest of my life no you're not you're a daughter of the king you are a daughter of the king of kings mm-hmm. and you do not deserve somebody who's going to be abusive verbally or physically or emotionally you deserve somebody who's going to treat you like a daughter of the king and going that is to so act good. like a son of the king themselves Yes, yes. You know, um, and you you touched on emotional um, abuse. When you could you expand that just a little bit about emotional abuse? Because we know really about the physical abuse and the mental abuse, but a little bit about the emotional abuse. Yeah. So um, I, I love this question because we ignore it a, a lot of times mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. in the church. A lot of times we just pretend it's not there. Um, it's like, well, you just need to suck it up and that, oh, that's just how men are, though, that's just how women are, or that's just how people are. Um, but if it's, if it's disrespectful, if it's abusive, if it's, if it's cutting you down, if it's not, um, if, if, if it, if it's cutting you down from who God called you to be and not lifting you up into the calling you have, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. My wife and I both come out of a lot of brokenness, second marriage for both of us. And one of the things I've learned is my job is to make a, is to facilitate a place in our home where her giftings can flourish. Wow. That's amazing. Her giftings to be able to flourish. (laughs) Yes. That's amazing. She should be able to come back to that house and have it be a sanctuary. That's amazing. A safe place. Um, but if, if someone is gaslighting, if someone is um, talking, and narcissists do this, they'll, they'll talk one way to everybody else and everyone believes them. Um, but then when you go home, it's a different story. And mm-hmm. they act completely differently. Um, uh, that's emotional abuse. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with that, I think a, no- a lot of manipulation comes in with that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, through the emotional abuse because they would you know try any and everything to manipulate the situation to benefit um, them as well and which goes into that narcissism which you discussed yeah yeah mm-hmm. so uh, yeah so so maybe you're going out to see a friend in the evening or whatever and instead of saying you know goodbye have a nice time they they say um yeah, leave me alone again like you always do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, no manipulation in there at all. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, it's instead what they what they should do is say, when you leave to spend time with your friends, I feel scared. Mm-hmm. You know, healthy communication is telling the other people about us. It's not telling them about them. You know, so if we're going to have an unhealthy conversation, I'll tell you about you all day. You always do this. You make me feel like this. You always, you always, you always. Instead, telling them about me. When this happens, when you do this thing and not putting any judgment on you doing that thing, but when that happens, I feel like this. I feel scared. I feel abandoned. I feel like your friends are more important in this marriage than I am. And you're being vulnerable and letting that person, you're trying to build your connection with that person. Yes. And you're being vulnerable. And then they have a choice. Now they have new information. Oh, I didn't know you felt that way. Mm-hmm. You know, well, when I don't get to spend time with my friends, I feel over, then they, then they say, well, when I don't get to spend time with my friends, I, I feel overwhelmed and smothered. And then you're like, oh, I didn't know you felt that way. 
well, how can we work this out so I don't feel abandoned and you don't feel smothered? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we can have a healthy conversation. Um, Which is so good. And um, But, you know, um, do you find sometimes, Dave, that um, more times than none, once you find that new information uh, with the people that you've counseled or helped, how often they're willing to let go and have a happy medium to where um, each person is able to give in to the needs of the other in order to help each other. Um, because once you find that information and you become vulnerable, then that person has the chance to make it right or they can still have the chance to make an excuse. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, think it, I, I think it comes down to what you're protecting in your relationship. So mm-hmm. in all relationships, we're, we're protecting one of two things. We're protecting distance because I'm scared to get too close to you. So I want to keep you at arm's length. So with one hand, I'm saying, here, come here, come close. And the other hand, I'm saying, no, stay away. Or we're protecting connection. So am I protecting my connection with you? In which case, I'm going to do my best to steward your heart well. Or am I protecting distance and want to keep you at arm's length? at a certain mm. distance away because I'm scared of having you closer for whatever reason. Either maybe there's some some hurt in me that's scared of having people close or maybe there's some behavior in you that's just scary. And it's like, I, I can't have that too close to me. Right, right. And, you know, and, and then when it gets to that point, a lot of times, you know, one of the other individual may end up leaving you or leaving Um, that particular situation and then you have to be able to deal with that and uh, you had also mentioned that there's a grieving process when a person leaves you and um, you know we don't talk about that a lot most of the times when you know an individual leaves we'll try to be shiro he man you know I'm fine I'm good and never really deal with the grieving process of a person leaving you because it's also just like if an individual or family or loved one that passes on um you have to grieve that process and if you don't it'll come out at the wrong time um so can you talk a little bit more about the grieving process and what are some healthy ways that we could grieve you know anyone that may be listening today oh i love that question dr tiffany because (laughs) yeah when when someone leaves a relationship and that relationship ends that's a death like you mm-hmm. said, that's that's a death just as if the person had really died. Um, and there's there's five stages of grief. There, there's denial, there's anger, there's bargaining, there's depression, and there's acceptance. And they go in all different orders, and you can be angry one day and fine the next, and the next day be in denial. I can't believe that really happened. I'm sure they'll be back tomorrow. They'll come to their senses. To the bargaining part, that's all the what ifs. You know, what if? What, what if I just said this? What if I hadn't said it that way? What if I had done it like this? Um, to the depression, the sadness. Uh, it's, it's important to feel all the feels and feel those emotions. Um, there's nothing wrong with you for being angry. Someone left. It's part of grieving. Mm-hmm. You just don't want to get stuck there. Right. There's nothing wrong with being sad and being depressed and... Um, you know, not being able to get out of bed today because this relationship you thought would be forever ended. You just don't want to get stuck there. Yes. Um, yes. That's so you know, good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's grieving, just like grieving a, grieving a death. And it's good to go through it with someone. Um, I, I guess the best advice I can offer your listeners is go through it with someone. Don't try to do this alone. Mm-hmm. God made us for community. We need each other, especially for hard stuff like this. Um, we need someone to help us through that grieving process. Um, you don't want someone who's going to say, you know, who's just going to try to make light of it. And mm-hmm. say, oh, you're so lucky that bag of bones is gone. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want someone who doesn't talk much and listens, you know, and lets you be angry, lets you be sad, lets you uh, go through all the stages of grief without trying to uh, pull you out of it. I I think there's a great model in the book of Job. Uh, Job's three friends get a bad rap most of the time, and that's (laughs) well well earned. Um, 
but they got it right for a whole week. They when did. They, they up, did. <laughs> they they sat with Job in the ashes uh-huh. of his life, and they were just quiet and they just were with him. Yeah. And then they opened their mouths and it was all downhill. From Messed there. it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And that is so important. And you know, uh, we did the uh, study on Job, and and um, one time I said, you know, they were quiet for a week. They were quiet and they were just yeah. there for him. And we missed that part. You know, it's so important. You know, when a person is grieving the process, you know, you don't want to hear "I told you so." You you know, you just yeah. don't want to hear that. You know, or "I knew it," like you said, and. Um, being able to grieve means that um, you have it takes time, you know, and it just doesn't go away uh, overnight. And it's nothing wrong with you. It's nothing wrong um, with your relationship with God, because a lot of times they'll say, you know, pull up yourself on your most holy faith. And we get so religious that yeah. God gave us emotions. He gave us, you know, all of these emotions that we deal with. But the key, like you said, is don't get stuck there. And the problem is a lot of times we get stuck there, but it's nothing wrong with being able to grieve a relationship um, that has been lost, you know, because that's the human side of us that God created us to be. And I find even when, when, when I lost my mother about five, you know, five years ago, um, and it was only maybe about a year or two, it wasn't even a year after, I think. And I I had to go to someone was asking me to do something on the program and um, I had said well you know I'm just not ready you know I'm just not ready um, to go up yet you know because I'm always involved in doing a lot of things and they were like well um, you need to get past that you can't stay there and it was only like six months or so I believe like not even quite a year yeah. and <laughs> and I'm like you have to understand that everybody grieves differently um, and you have to be sensitive to that in relationships um, when you um, lose someone that you've been with for a long time even in friendships I've had friendships that I had lost and things happen and I had to grieve through that but I also had to pick myself up and I didn't have to stay there. But there's nothing, like you said, Dave, with the process of being able to go through those emotions. Because if you don't deal with those emotions, what usually happens when you don't deal with those emotions and grieve that process? Oh, I love this question. Um, one of my other favorite quotes in the world is from John Sanford, who's passed away now with the start of the Elijah House Ministries. And he said, Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as an unexpressed emotion. It's coming mm. out. <laughs> Maybe 20 years from now and sideways, but it's coming out. Yeah. So if we stuff it, if we stuff it down inside, uh, it's going to come out and it's going to explode on people that have nothing to do with it. And we're going to be like, wow, where'd that come from? But whenever oh, wow. there's a mile of reaction to an inch of offense, that's a clue that there's something on going on inside that we need to deal with because mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. not the inch of offense that caused that mile of reaction. It's, it's something else. Um, and I, I think sometimes there, there's an unwritten rule in the church, unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes where, um, we have to be happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, if, if you're not full of the joy of the Lord, <laughs> you know, Every Sunday, there's something wrong with you. You're a bad Christian. You're not a bad Christian, are you? You know, and you know, and you feel like everyone's watching you. And so we go into church, we wear our fake happy face, Mm -hmm. and we say, look at all these happy people. I'm the only one who's sad. I'm the only one who's depressed. I'm the only one that's hurting. I'm the only one that's fighting through this. And you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not. Because half, half of the other ones are faking it, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because so we true. don't know how to be real. We right. don't know how to be safe with each other. And when someone's sad, we feel it makes us really uncomfortable. When someone shares what they're going through and they're sad mm-hmm. and they're having a tough time, we feel like we need to fix it. We realize, wow, this person's really going through the valley of the shadow of death. So I, I know I need to find them an off ramp and pull them out of there. Um, but that's not our job. It's not our job to fix them. It's not our job to try to make them feel happy. Um, it's important that we in the church, especially if one, I I believe revival's coming and we're going to have a lot of wounded people coming into the church. It's important that we get this right. Yes. Um, We need to get comfortable with people being sad. 
and we need mm-hmm. to get comfortable with people grieving and give them space to do that and sit with them in the sadness not trying to pull them out of the sh- the valley of the shadow of death but to walk with them through it because that's what Jesus does he never yes, promised so us true. smooth sailing in this world he promised us trouble actually mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but he said I'll be with you said I'll be with you in it I won't leave you alone I won't leave you as orphans I'll come to you I'll be with you in it and that's what we need to do we need to be there for each other um, it's okay if it, it's okay to have a bad day it's okay to have a bad day in church mm-hmm. and to say I, I was having a rough time and for to have friends who are okay with that because then they know it's safe for them to have a rough time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and you know go to the people of God when you're in crisis yes yes that's so true and I was going to say you know even with the sadness of the loss of um, the previous Miss USA you know and they're still talking about that and you know um, just being able to have someone to be able to grieve and um, to be able to go through that process because you never know how many people there are so many people in the church that are grieving there's so many people in the church that won't say anything because we so many times have to have this like you say perfect appearance like you know and if, if something is wrong with you then there must be something wrong with your god and that's not necessarily true at all um right. but we have to be willing um to allow that human side of the individual to process through it jesus will when lazarus died he will you know he had those yeah. emotions um and so we should be able to um weep as well and go through that grieving process because one thing i've learned dave even though i'm not married yet but you can expound on this and um being in marriage is that if you don't deal with that grieving process um once you're out of a relationship you will take that into the next relationship if you're not healed yep yeah you, you yeah you will we we repeat it um because the common denominator is is you you're the thing that you <laughs> in both relationships uh so the the best thing you can do when a relationship ends is to do your own work before you jump into another relationship mm-hmm. do your own mm-hmm. work get healthy yourself um before you jump into another relationship and because healthy attracts healthy and sick attracts sick that's so true that's so true well you know Dave some of the listeners may be leaving in an unhealthy relationship or considering leaving an unhealthy relationship and unhealthy or unhealthy people in their lives you know they don't like when we get healthy and we talked about this earlier but um expound about a, just a little bit more about why um they don't like when we get healthy yeah so I, I, again like we said sick attracts sick so mm-hmm. everyone's getting a benefit out of the unhealthy behavior and part of being healthy is giving up the benefit and mm-hmm. announcing the benefit of that unhealthy behavior so if i'm the example we gave before one person is the screamer and one person is the passive person mm-hmm. um if if i'm the passive person and i'm um going to get healthy you know the benefit to me is i get to look like the good guy all the time well maybe i you know i i need to give up looking like the good guy or if i'm a screamer and i want to get healthy and i realize these rages are destroying my family i don't want to do this i don't want to rage at this person um but maybe that raging helps me get my way so mm-hmm. i need to be willing to give up getting my way mm-hmm. um there's a benefit there. I've I've heard someone say um they they came for counseling and and the counselor said okay exactly for that reason raging and the counselor was like you know what benefit are you getting out of this the person was like I'm not getting any bit of out of it I'm destroying my family it's like no you're getting some out of this or you wouldn't be doing it so they prayed nice. and they asked the holy <laughs> spirit you know lord show me what I'm getting out of this and he said you know I I do know what I'm getting out of it because when I'm angry I don't feel the pain. And mm. it's this way of medicating pain in wow. his life from the past. 
Wow. And so he had to be willing to come out of the rages. He had to be willing to go back and deal with that pain that he was medicated by the rage. Yes. And the key issue is we have to be willing to deal with the pain. Um, and that just makes us face ourselves, you know, and someone may be listening today and it's time for you to, you know, face up and deal with the pain that you've been experiencing. God wants to set you free. You know, once we come in contact with Christ, there's always freedom in him. And he, there's no one that can free us like he can free us. And today, but I just feel the presence of the Lord um, even now on the podcast. So could you pray right quick for the listeners that may be going through unhealthy relationships? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that you do this on your podcast, that you pray for people in these situations. It's so powerful. Holy Spirit, yes. Lord, we just ask you to come. Yes. We ask your presence, Holy Spirit, um, for everyone listening within the sound of our voices, everyone listening uh, or who will li listen, who is going through unhealthy relationships or has had someone leave, we ask for, you, for your tangible presence with them. Yes. We Lord. pray that you would show them a healthy person, uh, yes. whether it's a counselor or a life coach or, or a pastor or a deacon or a friend, someone that they can talk to who will be who will be a safe place who will be a healthy safe place to give them godly advice to help them move through this because they do not have to go through this alone yes Lord. Lord, we just pray that you would help them through the grieving process you would help them understand what they're feeling and help them through that process of grieving the loss um, of coming to the realization of the loss of grieving the loss admitting the loss um, and moving through the, the phases of grief, being angry about it, being angry about how they were treated all those years before they got healthy, being angry um, about, yes, about um, being left, being abandoned. Yes, sir. Um, just right when they get healthy. Um, I just pray that your holy presence would be with them, your spirit would be with them, and you would lead them in the next steps uh, you have for them into yes. The, the promised land you have for them into the holy life you have for them, that you would lead them through the storm into the, the peace and, and the, the joy and the, the healthy, godly relationships on the other side of the storm that you have for them. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you listeners for being a part today. We're going to have Dave to come back because we have so much more to cover um, on the next episode. So I'm going to have him to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more um, about, you know, what are some things we can do as far as listening um, as you as you're listening, how you can process what you're going through. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that on the next episode. But thank you uh, so much, Dave for blessing us with your presence today on the podcast um and dave has a little gift for you today for those that have been listening and he'll have a gift for you on our next podcast so would you let the listeners know how they may contact you and tell them a little bit about the gift that you're offering to them yes so um uh on, on our website identityandwholeness.com if you go to identityandwholeness.com slash tasty tidbits there's a one-page download exclusive, ex exclusively for Dr. Tiffany's audience, uh, for the listeners to this podcast that summarizes everything we've been talking about, that summarizes these points we've been talking about, about what to do when someone leaves your life. So again, that's specifically for um, Dr. Tiffany's audience, uh, identityandwholeness.com slash tasty tidbits. All right. And so you can go there as well and you can find out more about Dave and what he does. Um, and I believe that he can help you through the process. He's gone through it personally with the grace of God. And I know um, that he could help you as well. So make sure to go to the website and check the website out. And we thank you listeners for listening in on today. And we will be back again on the next episode, continuing to talk about what to do when someone leaves you. If you know someone, um, they have experienced this, or if you've even experienced it yourself, join us back again in order to talk more about this and bring somebody else on so that they can be helped as well. I look forward to talking to you on our next episode. See you soon and God bless you.
Thank you for listening to Tasty Tidbits with Dr. Tiffany Watkins. If you're enjoying the show, feel free to subscribe, rate, and share with your friends. To learn more about Dr. Tiffany, check out her blog on goodreads.com or visit her website at www.renewedfaithministriesinc.com. Until next time, stay blessed.